Good afternoon to all. First of all, I would like to welcome Sri Ashok Thakurji, who has contributed much to the Institute. Sri Ashok Thakur is a former secretary, higher education, MHRD, Government of India. Mr. Thakur is a postgraduate in post in history from Punjab University, Chandigarh, and an alumni of International Institute of Public Administration, Paris, IDS, Swiss, and Kennedy School of Government, Harvard University. He joined the Indian Administrative Service in 1977 HP, where he held several posts, including Principal Secretary, Tourism, Culture, Youth Services, and Sports, Industries, Forest, Home, etc. At the center, he worked in the Ministry of Rural Development and also as a faculty member at Lal Bahadur Shastri National Academy of Administration, Masuri. He joined the Ministry of Human Resource Development in 2008, where he worked for seven years till he retired as Education Secretary in October 2014. An unprecedented number of top class institutions of higher learning were set up under him, including IITS, IMS, NITs, and central universities. He has been an ardent advocate to acceditation as an important tool in improving quality of education in higher education, providing autonomy to universities, improving state universities in conjunction with the governments there and advocating an open door policy for the best education providers in the world to participate and bring best practices into our country. He is honorary professor in, in public administration at Punjab University, Chandigarh. Now I would like to request Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Geshen Gawa Samdila, to felicitate Sri Ashok Thakurji. Now, I would like to request Sri Ashok Thakurji to deliver exalted talk on the subject of education. Respected Venerable Gishe Namang Samdanla, Vice Chancellor of uh, this esteemed university, I'm extremely mm, grateful to him for providing me this opportunity to interact with the faculty here and also your young students. <clears throat> it is indeed a pleasure for me personally. <clears throat> I have been asked to speak on education since uh, I've worked for about major part of my career, about seven, eight years in the Ministry of um, Human Resource Development. Uh, so I would like to share some of my takeaways from there. So for your convenience, I will divide my talk today in three parts. In the first part, I would like to talk about what is education? What constitutes a true university? That's an introductory thing, which could be my personal thing, but also it is applicable universally, so I think. My second part would be of more interest to the faculty that would be about the education system in our country and what ails it. Hamare education vavastha mein kya khamiya hai? Uske baare mein tip nahi karunga kuch mein. Aur aakhir mein, mein kuch bolna chahunga. Aapki joh sastha hai, 
उसका क्या रोल हो, हो, हो सकता है हिमालयन कल्चर को हिमाचल हिमालयन एजुकेशन सिस्टम को और हेरिटेज को प्रोटेक्ट करने के लिए प्रिजर्व करने के लिए ये तो तीन बिन पार्ट्स में मैं बातचीत करूंगा चर्चा करूंगा सो कमिंग टू द माय फर्स्ट इंट्रोडक्टरी पार्ट अबाउट व्हाट कॉन्स्टिट्यूट्स एजुकेशन इसी सिंस यूनिवर्सिटीज रेगुलेट एजुकेशन हायर एजुकेशन वन हैज टू अंडरस्टैंड द मीनिंग ऑफ अ यूनिवर्सिटी a university is a universe of knowledge it cannot be divided in parts it cannot be broken into departments as we usually do in other in the universities department of humanities department of physics department of chemistry department of fine arts these are all made for our convenience but actually they are a big stumbling block to the overall growth of the concept of knowledge knowledge is seamless uska koi shuru nahi hai uska koi ant nahi hai wo ek comprehensive whole hai wo linear nahi hai line ki tarah nahi hai wo goal hai knowledge ek comprehensive whole matlab ki usko divide nahi kar sakte wo knowledge hai और जो हम सीमाएं बनाते हैं वो अपने कन्वीनियंस के लिए बनाते हैं एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव पर वो बाधा डालती है नाउ इफ यू सी द बिगेस्ट इन्वेंशन दैट टेक प्लेस जो भी ह्यूमैनिटी के लिए इन्वेंशन हुए हैं वो इन्वेंशन डिसिप्लिन के पेरिफरीज में हुए हैं ऑल मेजर इन्वेंशन हैव टेकन प्लेस ऑन द पेरिफरी ऑफ डिसिप्लिन अगर आप फिजिक्स को ही लेके चलें तो वो बात नहीं बनेगी फिजिक्स प्लस केमिस्ट्री प्लस अदर सब्जेक्ट्स बिकम मोर यूजफुल सो देर फॉर वी हैव टू रियली रियलाइज दैट एजुकेशन इज इनडिविजिबल एट दैट इट हैज नो बिगिनिंग इट हैज नो एंड इट इज अ कंटिन्यूस होल दैट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू अंडरस्टैंड and education also has no value uh, values attached to it education matlab ki ek if i would say that who is a good teacher a good teacher is a person who is able to ignite the young minds to think freely usme koi badha nahi aani chahiye ये एक विचारधारा का या दूसरे विचारधारा का ये है या मेरे डिसिप्लिन से बाहर है नॉलेज क्योंकि असीमित है तो उस पर चर्चा भी इनकरेज करना चाहिए टीचर्स को सो देर फॉर इट इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दैट फॉर क्रिएटिव थिंकिंग दैट्स वाई द यूनिवर्स द यूनिवर्सिटीज यूनिवर्सिटीज आर अ प्लेस वेर यू कैन एक्सप्रेस फ्रीली एंड यू कैन नॉट से दैट this is right this is wrong everything can be discussed in a university and a teacher should be able to encourage that to wo hota hai tree open university everybody should be encouraged to speak and talk it may sound very childish but maybe there is some wisdom in that child's uh, point of view so therefore you have to give space to everybody to talk and speak that is true wisdom and then knowledge is also not for the sake of knowledge knowledge hona chahiye for the sake of helping the society for useful things knowledge akele ko grahan karne se kuch nahi hota knowledge grahan karne ke baad uska sahi upyog hona chahiye it should be directed towards the benefit of the society and lastly jo kahunga ki ye jo knowledge hai wo value based hona chahiye knowledge can be knowledge is like a knife you can kill a person with that knowledge or you can really carve beautiful things out of it so your application of knowledge 
should always be towards the positive side. I think this is what I understood is education. Firstly, it should be free, free minds. Mind should be free. It should be open, not crapped down by things. And um, this is something which uh, my professor has said, I have to accept it. No, you have to challenge him. In fact, uh, what does Buddha say? Buddha says, never accept anything on the face value of it. You have to challenge it yourself. You have to think whether it is right or wrong. If your mind says it is right, then it is right. But don't take things in a blindfolded manner. So that is true education, I feel. So this was my introductory remark about what I feel a university should do, an institution like this should do. And, uh, and fortunately, you know, it coincides with what the historical Buddha had said, that you have to test everything on the anvil of logic. This is my introductory remark. Now I will <clears throat> just like to more for the faculty. I think the students may also like, um, <laughs> may find it a bit interesting to just point out uh, where we are in terms of education. I won't go very deep into it, but a superficial idea or notion which I had formed while I was there and still continue to do, I would like to share some of them. <clears throat> I think uh, as far as <clears throat> growth of education in the India is concerned, whether it is school education or it is university education, it has been very creditable. We have probably the worst world's uh, second largest after China education system. Both, I think in, in, in the school education side, it would be or more than 250 million students. And on the higher education side, it will be about 30 million, I'll be almost touching 30, 30 million, which makes it actually the second largest after China, as I said. And in the coming years, I think we will be the largest. <clears throat> We had a target of something like 30% gross enrollment ratio. That means that number of students in our country in higher education in the age group of 18 to 24, that age group, 30% of them should be in higher education. And I think we are almost there to achieve. So that is mighty creditable as far as uh, enrollment of students in universities is concerned. But uh, unfortunately, uh, the story ends there. Are the students produced from our higher education system all employable? Are they of high quality? Do they compare with the best of the world? Definitely not. So why is it that we are not able to produce good universities and therefore good students? Well, there are a number of reasons. I will try to explain it to you. And then I will also uh, suggest some ways by which we can improve the quality of uh, higher education in the country. Uh, first of all, let me just explain that, you see, unless we improve the school education, nothing will happen to your university education. The students who pass out today from the schools will enter into the portals of your university. So if the material which comes out from the schools which enter into the portals of the universities is not up to the mark, then the universities will obviously struggle to produce people of uh, eminence <clears throat> in the universities. So we need to set the schools in order, first of all. And we'll, when we look at the schools, 
bulk of the funding from government of india goes to the government schools unfortunately in the government schools in a way we have uh, almost surrendered i would say the state governments are in charge of looking after the schools school education primarily is a school subject higher education is on the concurrent list so therefore the school aspect which is totally looked after by and large by the by the state governments have completely i would say <laughs> folded up why is it so there is also uh, an issue about funding but keeping that aside my understanding is that um, bulk of the problem is because the political system in the country have uh, fallen into the hands of the teachers association union or you may say their lobby because teachers live with the public in villages they are very closely connected with the with the people and therefore the votes so therefore the politician and the teachers unions have developed a very very cozy relationship i won't touch you and you in turn will work for me when the election comes this is the reality of life unless this nexus is broken and the state governments and the chief ministers say that this is education this is about the future of my state my young boys and girls i will not compromise and therefore the selection of teachers would be done very very uh, transparently the best teachers would be selected and then when it comes to posting teachers there will be a regular posting posting and transfer policy and therefore unless this is done i think the system of education in uh, in schools throughout the country will not improve and uh, normally people think that you see the in all government systems things don't work but that is not true if you look at the kendriya vidyalayas do you have a kendriya vidyalay here somewhere nearby you have kendriya vidyalayas vidyalayas produce excellent results yet they are they, they are under the government system it is under the central government so the point which i was making about politics meddling with education system is i think very clear if the kendriya vidyalayas can do it why can't the state governments do it it is an administrative issue it is a political kind of a will which they have to do make up their minds that this is education and there will be no politics there there will be strict enforcement of the rules and regulation transfer promotion selection processes would be transparent i think if they do this like they de- they have in kendriya vidyalaya i was vice chairman of kendriya vidyalaya for for 5 years so i know how the systems work there the polit- the politicians do not interfere there all the ministers who were there uh there were some 15 20% posts which were left to the politicians but 80% was with us and we enforced it therefore it worked so there is a big lesson for for the state governments to learn from the kendriya vidyalaya system and the central government so this is the second thing which we lack in our education system in our country is that we have <clears throat> divorced skilling vocational education from our mainstream education this is the biggest flaw this is a very serious flaw and because of this we are suffering till today you see when 10 plus 2 system was introduced in our country the logic was that 
after 10th they would be streaming boys and girls who were bright enough who were sharp they were put on to the university side college side rest of the boys and girls like all other countries in the world whether it is germany whether it is uk whether it is china they are put in another stream that is the vocational stream where you work with your hands unfortunately in our country whether you say it is because of the varna system working with our hands is considered lowly हाथ से जो काम करता है उसको नीच मानते हैं उसके कारण ये वोकेशनल एजुकेशन ये कभी पकड़ ही नहीं पाया है मेन एजुकेशन के साथ आ, आप में से पता है कितने को पता होगा कि ये ये जो शब्द कमीन है कमीन इसका ओरिजिन कहां से होता है कमीन होता है जो आदमी हाथ से काम करता है खेत में काम करता है मजदूरी करता है दिहाड़ी करता है तो उस व्यक्ति को जो कमीन कहलाता है उसको बिगड़ के उसको जैसे हम कभी किसी को गाली निकालते हैं तो वो तो वो कमीने ही इज लुक डाउन अपॉन आर सोसाइटी लुक्स डाउन अपॉन एनीबडी हु वर्क विद इज हैंड्स सो बिकॉज ऑफ दिस सेट मेंटेलिटी दैट एनीबडी हु वर्क विद इज हैंड इज लोली our vocational system could never catch up so therefore though we had the 10 plus 2 system students were supposed to be separated from you know from the bright students going to universities to the others putting in the it never worked nobody sent their children to to these institutions to skilling institutions so with the result that it just died down so today i think we have this whole skill india campaign and everything but unless we take out that mentality from the minds of our society that working with your hands is not lowly in fact it is divine unless we set that thing out nothing will happen to mission skill india campaign which we are having so that that is a basic flaw which we need to correct even today i think we are not late if we introduce vocational education as part of our education system and do not look upon look down upon working with our hands so this is very very important so these two things as i have said have killed our education system number one about our government schools which get bulk of the funding they go going down the drain we need to take urgent corrective measures throughout the state governments all the chief ministers they must resolve in their cabinets that we will not play politics we will let it let discipline reign supreme in this education department and then sec- skilling should be made part and parcel of education with these two things i think we can have wondrous results the other thing which i wanted to um, to tell you is about why are education system doesn't do do well is the curriculum which we which we make has very little to do with with the place where these boys are going to work boys and girls are going to work later on actually there should be a very close coordination between what is taught in the classroom and what will be useful for them later on when they graduate from the university उसका तालमेल होना चाहिए चाहे वो आपके यहाँ पर तो एप्लीकेबल नहीं है इंडस्ट्रीज के साथ ताल्लुक नहीं है लेकिन फिर भी आप लोगों का जहाँ बच्चे लोग जाते हैं जिन, जिन संस्थाओं में काम करते हैं यूनिवर्सिटीज में काम करते हैं उनके साथ तालमेल होना चाहिए ताकि वो जो बच्चे यहाँ से जाते हैं और वहाँ काम करेंगे उनको कल को क्या चीज़ की ज़रूरत पड़ती है और जो आप क्लास में पढ़ाते हैं उसका मेल होना चाहिए आम तौर पे क्या होता है कि इंडस्ट्री है चाहे बिजनेस है जो बच्चे लोग जब वहाँ पहुँचते हैं पास आउट होके तो उनको कुछ पता ही नहीं होता उनको लिंक ही नहीं होती है सो इट इज़ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दैट द एजुकेशन इंस्टीट्यूशंस एंड द इंडस्ट्री और वेर एवर दे गोइंग टू वर्क हैव अ कॉन्स्टेंट डायलॉग 
the university should ask what should i teach what do you want unless that thing happens we are both working in different directions with the result that the the the, the quality of students which we produce has nothing to do with the rest of the world so that is very important and then the university should also encourage uh, adjunct faculty from outside from the industry aapke yahan to industry nahi hai par bahar ki jo faculty hai ya bahar ke jo log jin sansthaon mein aap bacche bhejte ho wahan ke log yahan aake padhane chahiye aur aapke log wahan ja ke kaam padhna chahiye to sirf apne universities mein nahi baithna hai balki university se bahar jahan aapke bacche काम करते हैं उनके साथ कांस्टेंट तालमेल करना बहुत अच्छा रहेगा मेरे ख्याल ये बहुत जरूरी है इसके कारण देर इज नो कंपैटिबिलिटी बिटवीन व्हाट इज टॉट इन द क्लासरूम्स एंड व्हाट द इंडस्ट्री वांट्स और व्हाट द यूजर सेक्शन वांट्स फ्रॉम एक्सपेक्ट फ्रॉम द यूनिवर्सिटी सो दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दैट यू वी डू दैट द नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग ऑन विच आई वुड लाइक टू speak is that i've been speaking to yeshala about the quality of faculty universities are not made of beautiful buildings of course they add to the aesthetics building bhi achhi honi chahiye lekin building se bhi zyada hai wo jo andar jo jo padhate hain unki quality kya hai bahut zaruri hai टीचर्स की क्वालिटी तब बढ़ेगी जब आपकी सिलेक्शन प्रोसेस बहुत ट्रांसपेरेंट होगी यूनिवर्सिटी सिस्टम्स में जो हमने देखा है इफ व्हेन इट कम्स टू सिलेक्शन इन दी इन टी दी आई जिस सर्विस में मैं बिलोंग करता था उसमें सेंट्रलाइज एडमिशन होता है यू पब्लिक सर्विस कमीशन सिलेक्ट करती है और भी कई सर्विस हैं सबके सेंट्रलाइज तरीके से नॉर्म्स फॉलो होते हैं उसमें ज्यादा गड़बड़ होने का स्कोप नहीं है लेकिन क्योंकि यूनिवर्सिटीज ऑटोनमस है तो यूनिवर्सिटीज अपने फैकल्टी की सिलेक्शन स्वयं करती है उसमें फिर कई ऑब्जेक्ट सब्जेक्टिविटी आ सकती है मैं नहीं कहता कि होता है हमेशा पर यह जरूर है कि सिलेक्शन में गड़बड़ होने का बहुत चांस है और खास तौर पे यहां तो फिर ठीक है साउथ इंडिया में आपने सुना होगा कि वाइस चांसलर के जो मैं आप लोगों को डरा नहीं चाह डरा नहीं रहा हूं लेकिन सिर्फ केवल बता रहा हूं कि आठ आठ दस दस एक एक प्रोफेसर ने बोला है आईटी प्रोफेसर ने कि दस दस करोड़ तक वाइस चांसलर की पोस्ट के लिए दिया जाता है जहां पर वाइस चांसलर खुद पैसे दे बनता है तो फैकल्टी से ही वो लोग कमाते होंगे इसीलिए बहुत जरूरी है कि इस चीजों से हमारे यहां साउथ में है ऐसा साउथ में काफी प्रेवलेंट है ये सिस्टम बड़े दुर्भाग्य की बात है लेकिन है ऐसा सो देर फोर इट इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दैट द सिलेक्शन ऑफ फैकल्टी इज डन इन अ वेरी अनबायस्ड वे वेरी क्लीन वे आई वॉज जस्ट स्पीकिंग टू योर वाइस चांसलर यू सी द नाउ द सैलरीज ऑफ फैकल्टी आर नॉट द सेम विच फॉर अबाउट टेन फिफ्टीन ईयर्स बैक द वेरी गुड सैलरीज you cannot imagine it is better than is officers for sure so the f- money is there but have we been able to convert this this short corner into a goal i am doubtful whether this this salary increase has resulted in quality faculty i am not sure because of the decentralized way in which faculty is selected whole lot of pressure is put on to um, to the management to to select ab stakes aur jyade ho gaye hain tankhaye bad gayi hain to jo jo banda jisko ghusna wo duniya bhar ke zor laga dega andar ghusne ke liye so this is what is happening the, in reality so one has to be very very the people uh, institutions like yours are strong enough to bear it so you have an excellent vice chancellor who is able to bear it but most of the vice chancellors cannot bear it so therefore we get not so good faculty and unless we have good faculty you know you will not have good university. so this is a major major problem as far as, as the faculty is concerned 
research is another thing india unfortunately spends less than 1% of its gdp on research which is very very in fact 0.8% which is very very low compared to china and other advanced countries which 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 spend the probably 5% 10% also on research so research is something which has to be you know we also then uh, have an argument indians always have an argument oh no we are not a research university we are a teaching university there is no teaching university it has to be research driven faculty has to be on its toes doing research if you don't do research then you are probably a college or something or a year school you're not a university but i was really pleased today i saw it from my own eyes the level of research which you people are doing in your university here i think it is something to be very very proud of so therefore unless other universities also put and keep the pressure on research teaching is is just a by product a person who is engaged in research will always be thinking he has to be in the subject in which he is teaching he should be the master he should be able to to kind of relate to the best that is or the latest that is happening in that field in the world he should be in touch with professors everywhere not just live in a cocoon in his university in his room he should have a lot of contacts everywhere and what is happening he should be able to tell the students and also he himself will feel professionally very proud and strong that i know these are the uh, these are the best things that are happening and i am in touch with professor so and so from that university you, uh, nowadays through internet email whatsapp you can be in touch with anybody in the world so i think we must make use of technology and keep our knowledge abreast <clears throat> um you see uh, another point which keeps coming you must have you must know that in education in higher education in india ugc is the regulator there are about more than 800 universities in the country ugc by an act of parliament has been given the power to regulate higher education and what it is mandated to do is it sets minimum standards in education in higher education unfortunately what has happened is that out of those list of 800 universities i would say that okay about 200 of them are good extremely good but rest of them are very ordinary and so the minimum standards with ugc fixes becomes the maximum bolte bhai humne to ye kar diya aapne itna likha hai karne ke liye maine ye kar liya hai but that is not the idea that is the minimum you have to go above that and not just be on that level so biggest problem is that ugc fix fixes standards for the worst university actually ye university humne bana rakha hai iske kya standard ho sakte hai uska nap lob leke karti hai with the result that the universities which are high up which which can probably compete with with the rest of the world they are penalized because the same rules which is for that last university and the bottom is applied to the best so the what i'm trying to say is that the best universities should be actually be let free there should be minimum regulation for the good universities like universities like yours which have uh, uh, a plus grade evaluations etc should be set free wo pakdo jo niche wale log hain jo commercialize base se chalte hain unko pakdo to baat banti hai par wo kya karte hain ki wo jo niyam banate hain hote hain ki unko tackle karne ke liye jo sabse niche hai par effect ho jata hai jo sabse upar hai so our regulatory system inhibits excellence so this is a big problem which we constantly had to struggle with ugc अभी कुछ अच्छे रेगुलेशंस मैंने सुना कुछ आ रहे हैं जिसमें कि ए ग्रेड यूनिवर्सिटीज़ को छूट दे रहे हैं ये बहुत पॉजिटिव चीज़ है और मेरे को पूरी आशा है कि इससे 
जहाँ तक तो नीचे वाले यूनिवर्सिटीज़ हैं जो अच्छा काम नहीं कर रहे हैं उन पर नकेल रहेगी और जो अच्छे यूनिवर्सिटीज़ हैं जो हवा में उड़ना चाहते हैं उनको उड़ने दीजिए उनको बेड़िया मत बांधिए सो ये एक अच्छी चीज़ हो रही है आई आई एम क्लियरली वेटिंग एंड सींग वॉट विल एक्चुअली हैपन अच्छा दूसरा एक ये भी है कि एजुकेशन जैसे मैंने आई स्पोक टू यू एन मैंशन टू यू दैट इंडियन एजुकेशन सिस्टम हैज़ ग्रोन वाइडली बट द प्रॉब्लम इज़ दैट द जेंडर पार्टिसिपेशन इज़ वेरी लो द रेशियो ऑफ गर्ल स्टूडेंट्स कंपेयर टू द बॉयज इज स्टिल रिलेटिवली लो सो वी नीड टू रियली वर्क आउट दूसरा ये भी है कि सम पार्ट्स ऑफ इंडिया आर वेरी एडवांस इन हायर एजुकेशन फॉर एग्जाम्पल तमिलनाडु आंध्र प्रदेश देर यू कैन कंपेयर द ग्रॉस इन्वर्टमेंट रेशियो विद एनी एडवांस कंट्री वेर एज देन यू हैव स्टेट्स लाइक यू पी स्टेट्स लाइक बिहार वेयर द जी आर इज वेरी लो and it is taking some time for higher education enrollments to take place so in and even caste wise i think the people belonging to the uh, to the backward areas difficult areas and people who belong to um, uh, so socially underprivileged classes their enrollment is also relatively low so we need to work on all these issues so so i have till now mentioned to you about about the problems now there are some of the now it's very easy to state the problems but i think we should have some uh, positive things to say how to tackle them so i have some things in my mind and uh, i would like to share share with you the most important tool to improve quality in university system and education is not necessarily through ugc and the system which i mentioned to you just spoke to you the best method is accreditation aap logon ke yahan nac ki taiyari ho rahi hai mere ko dekh ke kafi prasanta hui accreditation is a very positive tool accreditation means that an institution comes from outside the system and which assesses where you overall fit into the classification whether it is top most or a plus or it is down there so once you have a transparent way of doing accreditation then you know then the the, the universities also make an effort to improve the system over a period of time if it is not good today maybe after 3 years they'd be good so there the trend is towards improving it having said that um i also feel that the accreditation institution should be totally autonomous it should not be part of the government it should be the academics themselves in all foreign universities whichever body does the accreditation is autonomous it is not with the government i have been voicing this since since i was secretary in mhrd but it takes a lot of time to do that and even today nac though it is supposed to be autonomous it is still under ugc and ugc is part of the government so i think eventually over a period of time i'm sure that the accreditation will be totally autonomous otherwise it is like you are the you are the thanedar and you are the judge आप ही रिपोर्ट बनाओगे और आप ही प्रोसिक्यूट करोगे आप ही सेंक्शन दोगे यूनिवर्सिटी स्टार्ट करने के लिए विच इज़ यू जी सी एंड यू जी सी ओनली अक्रेडिट इट दैट इज दैट इज अस्ड दैट अ फिक्सड मैच आई एम नॉट सेंग ऑल द टाइम इट हैपन्स लाइक दैट बट ओवरऑल आई एम सेंग द सिस्टम शुड बी दैट इट शुड बी अटोनमस चर्चा हो तो होती है इसकी बात इसके बारे में और मेरे को आशा है कि आने वाले सालों में करेक्शन विल बी मेड एंड जस्ट लाइक इन टेक्निकल एजुकेशन वी वर एबल टू मेक एन बी ए ऑटोनमस फ्राम फ्राम ए आई सी टी सिमिलरली आई होप नैक ऑल्सो बिकम्स टोटली अटोनमस ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट और यू जी सी देन यू कैन एक्सपेक्ट फेयर असेसमेंट ऑफ योर योर सिस्टम नंबर टू विच आई फील इज दैट वी नीड टू invest in our teachers 
the national mission on teachers and training, which is very, very important, I think, where you have uh, the teachers exposed to the best ped pedagogy of the world. That those practices should be known to them. There should be constant workshops and other things, interaction, so that you're able to improve your quality. I think that is uh, that is very, uh, very important. Uh, apart from this, I'd like to say three small things. I would just like to, um, why are IITs considered high, Indian Institute of Te Technologies? Uh, so I looked into it and I found that there are three or four reasons why IITs do well compared to rest of the universities in our country. Number one, they do not have inbreeding. Jis bache ne PhD apne IIT se ki hai, usko kuch saal ke liye bolte hain ki bahar jao, bahar padao. Wahan se jo padke aoge, nokriyan aapki nishto ho jayegi, tab bishak aap aajayege, par डायरेक्टली हम नहीं लगाएंगे आपको यहाँ पे क्योंकि वो फिर वो इनब्रीडिंग का साधन बन जाता है उससे क्वालिटी कॉम्प्रोमाइज होती है यू सी इनब्रीडिंग इज अ बिग प्रॉब्लम इन आ कंट्री इन आ यूनिवर्सिटी सिस्टम अ पर्सन फैकल्टीज पर प्ले ग्रो गॉड वो कहते हैं कि तो मेरा बंदा है इसको मैंने लगाना है असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर लगाना है तो वो क्वालिटी सफर कर जाती है हम तो सोचते हैं अच्छा हमारा बच्चा है यहीं लग जाएगा पर उसका लॉन्ग टर्म इफेक्ट क्या होता है वो बहुत उसका इफेक्ट होता है सो इन ब्रीडिंग इज समथिंग विच आई आई टीज अवॉइड एब्सोल्यूटली जिस जिस बच्चे ने पीएचडी की है वो बाहर जाएगा कुछ साल के लिए बेशक बाद में आ जाए पर कुछ साल के लिए बाहर रहेगा अपने नौकरी वहाँ कमाएगा प्रूव करेगा कि यस आई कैन बी ऑन माई ओन फीट मैं सवारे से नहीं लगाऊँ क्योंकि इन ब्रीडिंग जब होती है तो फिर वो क्वालिटी कॉम्प्रोमाइज होता है एक तो ये इशू है नंबर टू है जो फैकल्टी की जो सिलेक्शन है मैं फिर उसी पे आ रहा हूँ क्योंकि वो बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट चीज़ है फैकल्टी सिलेक्शन के लिए टेन्यूर सिस्टम होता है अमेरिका और अदर प्लेसेस में कि आपको सीधा नियुक्त नहीं करेंगे कुछ साल देखेंगे उ, 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 उस पीरियड में फैकल्टी भी देख लेता है कि ये मेरे लाइक रहने की जगह है कि नहीं है और मैनेजमेंट भी देखती है कि ये ये बंदा कैसा है चलेगा कि नहीं चलेगा अगर तालमेल ठीक बैठता है कुछ सालों के बाद फिर उसको टन और पक्का देते हैं तब तक नहीं देते हैं हमारे यहाँ पे होता है काले कहने में तो देते हैं प्रोबेशन पीरियड एक साल का होता है दो साल का होता है पर किसी को नहीं निकालते हैं अपॉइंट हो जाता है तो फिर पक्का हो जाता है तो उससे फिर बहुत प्रॉब्लम हो जाती है न ये सब एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव चीज़ें हैं पर ये ये प्रैक्टिकल चीज़ें मैं आप लोगों से बात कर रहा हूँ जो मैंने खुद व्यक्तिगत तौर पर देखी हैं तो इन चीज़ों को देखना चाहिए और रिसर्च बहुत ज़रूरी है जो फैकल्टी रिसर्च नहीं करता है बोलता है मैं तो सिर्फ केबल पढ़ाऊंगा तो बात नहीं बनी उसको रिसर्च ज़रूर करना है और फिर गवर्नमेंट की ऐसी स्कीमें हैं जैसे करियर एडवांसमेंट स्कीम्स हैं इन चीज़ों से दूर रहना चाहिए हालांकि ये करियर एडवांसमेंट स्कीम के के तौर पे प्रमोशंस होती हैं गवर्नमेंट में तो ठीक है फाइल चले ना चले कोई फ़र्क नहीं पड़ता है लेकिन एजुकेशन संस्थाओं में अगर कोई आदमी टाइम स्केल के कारण प्रमोट हो जाता है तो फिर क्वालिटी सफ़र करती है वो रिसर्च नहीं करता है कुछ नहीं करता है और फिर ऑटोमेटिकली प्रमोट हो जाता है तो मेरे ख्याल वो कॉन्सेप्ट मेरे ख्याल एजुकेशन इंस्टीट्यूशन में नहीं आना चाहिए सो so ये ये चार चीज़ें हैं जिसको अगर आप सही रूप से अगर हम अनुपालन करें तो काफ़ी इम्प्रूवमेंट आ सकता है पर यह सब बिटर पिल्स हैं दीज आर बिटर पिल्स तो अगर आप कुरीन की गोली खाओगे तभी मलेरिया जाएगा ना तो ये मेरा <laughs> सोचने का है अच्छा लास्टली आई वुड लाइक टू लास्ट पार्ट ऑफ माय थर्ड पार्ट ऑफ माय टॉक इज अबाउट द रोल ऑफ इंस्टीट्यूशंस लाइक योर्स फॉर प्रमोटिंग एंड प्रिजर्विंग द हेरिटेज ऑफ द हिमालयन रीजन ये एक बहुत बड़ा आप लोगों को मैंडेट मिला है गवर्नमेंट की तरफ से सरकार की तरफ से पब्लिक की तरफ से इसको समझना बहुत ज़रूरी है क्योंकि टिल 1962 जो हमारा कॉन्फ्लिक्ट चाइना के साथ हुआ तब तक के लिए हमारे बॉर्डर्स बड़े पोरस थे 
हमारे बॉर्डर के लोग हैं चाहे लद्दाख के थे चाहे लाहौल स्पीति के थे चाहे अरुणाचल प्रदेश के थे चाहे उत्तराखंड सिक्किम के थे उन लोग आते जाते थे तो पोरस बॉर्डर तो उसके साथ क्या होता था कल्चर का आदान प्रदान बिल्कुल सही चला हुआ था सो so, जो हमारा हिमालयन बुद्धिज्म है या उसके साथ जुड़ा हुआ आर्ट है उसके साथ कल्चर है वो ऑटोमेटिकली प्रिजर्व हो रहा होता था क्योंकि वो इंटरेक्शन होता था आपस में पर जब आफ्टर द सिक्सटी टू वॉर दिस बिकेम कम्प्लीटली डेड इट वॉज फ्रोजन सो जब आदान प्रदान बंद हो जाएगा तो उसका जो कल्चर था वो स्टैगनेंट हो गया बिल्कुल ये अलग बात है कि दो इट वॉज आई शुड नॉट से इट इज इट वॉज अ ब्लेसिंग इन डिस गाइज इन द सेंस दैट His Holiness came to India, and Buddhism came in a very big way to India. That that is a separate thing. But uh, as far as people to people interaction was concerned, that completely stopped. Or, uske karan kya hua ki jo uh, ab time aa gaya ki that this should be regenerated and regrown. Tibet is now no longer able to kind of. give us the cultural input which used to do earlier we have whole lot of monasteries all along in these states which i mentioned and there is so much of rich culture today your vice chancellor showed me all the publications that you have it is amazing such a rich we one thing good you are doing is that you are preserving all those heritage uh the i would say manuscripts and uh, so many thousands of in fact books which have captured our culture generated through centuries thousands of years the nalanda tradition itself which actually belongs to india but it was preserved in tibet now we have to continue not only preserving it but look at it from the modern context technology is taking over the whole world in a very big way we need to understand try to preserve it in the terms of the latest tools available which i was so happy to see that a uh, whole lot of uh, digitization work is taking place and you are preserving that culture but our job is not only to preserve but also to repropagate it i think that is very very important that is what this uh, university has the mandate to do there is no other university in india which has the mandate to do this at the national level at the government of india level so i think uh, that mandate has to be understood and it has to be taken further what is worrisome is that um i don't say that this is a phenomena which happens only happened only to our part of the world throughout the world nobody wants to to take on the robes or to become monks even christianity for that matter if you go to london if you go to paris all those beautiful churches which you see many of them have been converted into apartments nobody wants to become a monk i think the same problem you have even more so in the tibetan communities no tibetan if you go to montcourt and uh, balakupe there hardly any tibetan boys who who, who, be, who become monks they're all going to us and for good reasons i guess so this is the reality whether you like it or not so all these beautiful monasteries all these books who will read all these books who will try to um, interpret it and carry on to the next generation these beautiful monasteries you you see which his holiness has built or we have some of the best uh, gompas in the himalayan region they will all go to seed finish so it is very very important that universities like yours take the lead and help rejuvenation of this not only in in uh, translating it and preserving it but also i think you are doing a very good job the last year when i was in lahol Uh, several of your professors came to lahol i was very happy they interact with the with the with the monasteries in the local areas and try to see what kind of uh, need is required there you know just like i said 
that um, there should be collaboration with the industry for the mainstream universities. Your industry are those, those monasteries in, uh, hidden in the Himalayas. You should send more your faculty more often to, this, uh, to, to, to these interior places and see what they want. And then revive most of those gompas are dying, go, dying away. It's, it's probably the last few 10, 15 years that you see them. It, they'll all vanish. So therefore, it is very important. The mandate which you have, you have to take it forward. Very important is, is the struggle of all the Himalayan states to have Boti language recognized as, as a scheduled language under our constitution. This can happen and I think this has to happen because unless we do that, there is no way that we will be able to carry the, um, our culture forward because all our, all our wisdom is locked in those books. Unless our young children have access to it, understand what is written in there, you know, the, 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 the future seems to be not very, very bright. So we need to work towards this in a very, very, uh, very big way. Uh, and which you are doing actually. So in the end, I won't take long. I have covered all my three areas which I wanted to. Uh, and I feel very good being with all of you. Uh, and uh, my only last word would be uh, that the faculty here, you people are blessed here. And because of your efforts, I think um, the vision of His Holiness to carry on the Nalanda tra tradition and give it back to the country from where it originated would only be ful fulfilled. And you people are doing a very good, good job in preserving uh, and fulfilling His Holiness's His very dear um, desire. Thank you very much. Now, if you have any query, comment, etc., you are welcome. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for this incisive lecture, sir. Something very practical things has come at the foreground. I teach here in the English department. And I want to share my anxiety about two of the points which is taking place in our country right now. When you talk about the system of Kendriya Vidyala, I immediately associate myself with this and appreciate that. But then I also inevitably was thinking about central universities also. And immediately a problem came in my mind was, because you are in from administration also, so I'm sure you understand it better, that at school education, our students are not ambitious enough to look their career into politics. Whereas in central universities, given to the kind of chaos which is taking place at the JNU and you know universities like that. So how do we cope with that problem? Is it that suddenly our students and you know the whole discourse that first time I saw in the news that people were saying that Are bhai, ab IITs mein bhi logo ne utha liye. you know this whole discourse ki it is not only now JNU or BHU or AMU but even the IITs students which were supposed to be a diehard research oriented university students are not happy with the status quo so is it the problem that how do we cope with this problem that at university level we will have to understand that the students are ambitious enough to find their political career also, which is not the case, I guess, so far as I understand it well, is in the school, Kendriya Vidyalaya system, number one. Number two, I was just wondering about this fact that, sir, yes, we are extremely blessed to work at this campus. But the places like that are very rare. We are not a science university. We are a diehard, let's call it humanities campus. But so far as the funding is concerned, so far as UGC is giving funding to the universities, specifically humanities, they have literally cut it down. And uh, this is not the discourse of India. I'm talking about a discourse which is taking place internationally, where humanities departments are getting shut down. There is a deadlock and an aporia which has taken place. And UGC is saying that Aap apne self finance course chalaiye. Ye aisa hua ki main apne bete ko bolu ki beta kamao, but mere rule ke hisab se kamao. So they are, you know, trying to curtailing the autonomy of the universities also. So how humanities 
not sciences as you talked about research funding but i would also you know was curious to see because you come from that you know the inner realities kitna percent us 1.8 jo aapne bola hai usme se humanities ko mil raha hai jabki humanities university se hum expect kar rahe hain that they are supposed to be the you know the sun which are going to earn and give us back also so just two points which i wanted to clarify thank you so much okay uh, regarding your first point uh, yes i i agree that school students are less exposed to politics so therefore the they are less participated in the political process um, but my point was slightly different what i was trying to say is that that, that uh, the if kendriya vidyalayas have a good regime to improve their system then the state governments can also uh, take some extra effort and take politics out of it and ensure that the uh, that the teachers go and attend those schools there are many uh, school teachers who don't even go to the school leave alone uh, teach properly or something like that so my my point was limited to the, to to that and uh, secondly your issue about uh, uh, central universities and the iits kind of uh, participating in these pro- in these protests i guess uh, this is a political issue and uh, personally i would not like to comment on that but i i feel that students you cannot keep politics away from universities for for artificially the students are young they will express their feelings and you cannot put a lid on it as like i said in the very beginning that uh, the universities are places where there is free thinking you you can of course the ulterior motive should not be there that a person is trying to grab a b- bite so that he gets a political career that is uh, that is not the point but the point is that universities are free places where you can express yourself that is the the limited thing uh, i wanted to say <coughs> anything else as far as the budget is concerned yes the humanity people throughout the world have a raw deal because science is looked at as a as a milch cattle it gives very fast returns whereas humanities is long term and it is embedded in you know uh, the returns are slow but they are very tangible very important yes any question from among the students or from the faculty koi bhi puch kahin se bhi aap log puch sakte hain good afternoon sir uh main vis se hum spiti se hu agar spiti ke baat kare to aur spiti ke aapne jaise kahe kahe hain ki hamara कल्चर कंजर्व करना है तो कल्चर कंजर्व करना बड़े मुश्किल होते हैं क्योंकि हमारे जो स्पीति के स्पीति जो हिमाचल गवर्नमेंट के अंदर पढ़ते हैं और जैसे बुक हैं डिज़ाइन किया होते हैं हिमाचल के बच्चों के लिए पूरे डिज़ाइन किए होते हैं मेजोरिटी वहाँ वो हमारे कल्चर वो नहीं होते हैं हिमालयन नहीं होते हैं तभी उस टाइम जो हमारे बच्चे होते हैं सब छोटे से उसी उसी सिस्टम को पढ़ते जाते हैं तो उस तरह के उस तरह के सिचुएशन में हम अपने कल्चर बच्चों को फिर कैसे कल्चर के बारे में समझाएं और कैसे कंजर्व करें कल्चर को बड़े मुश्किल होते हैं आई थिंक दिस इज़ अ वेरी 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 प्रैक्टिकल पॉइंट ही इज़ रेज्ड दैट दो यू मे से हिमाचल बट हिमाचल हैज़ सो मेनी अदर ट्वेल्व डिस्ट्रिक्ट एंड दे हैव मोर पॉपुलेशन मोर से दे फोर दे दे हैव दे थिंग्स एडेड इन टू द कैरिकुलम वेर एज स्पीति which may be very rich man different it is voiceless i think that's a very very relevant uh, question so therefore uh, you see it is very important that uh, uh, that we put pressure through institutions like these to open 
schools where you can teach bodhi language at least when you know when you when you when are taught bodhi language then automatically he will get exposed to the uh, to to its his own culture so i think uh, mhrd once so it is very important that the bodhi language is actually recognized constitutionally as part of um, the indian system then you see then what happens is that then in all these border districts bodhi can be taught as part of the subject as of now yes there are some some schools in lahul spiti district and in ladakh where bodhi is taught but it is like an add on subject it should be part of the curriculum and uh, and like he is saying but it is a constant struggle we have to make and i think uh, institutions universities like you you are like yours can lobby to to put this point across that bodhi should be taught uh, taught in in all border schools lahul spiti kinnor ladakh sikkim and from there uh, once it is taught then you know they'll be automatically be exposed to their culture and they can even come to universities like here later now i would like to request honorable vice chancellor to give presidential presidential address thank you sir <coughs> respected uh, shri ashok thakur ji our faculty members staff and uh, your students uh i have been waiting for this occasion for the last uh, um many years uh, since after shri ashok ji retired from ministry of human resource we were very much uh, benefited and he has uh, contributed a lot to higher education in general and then particularly to uh many of the institutions uh, during his uh, period uh, he has uh, initi- taken initiatives to develop and then reinforce and uh, uh put measures and uh, to to in order to improve the qualities and uh, uh, and and, uh, and develop the institutions so and also to this institution he has uh, been very kind and uh, um he has saved us from many <laughs> uh very dangerous situations uh, just to um narrate a couple of them um we received we were interacting with the ugc and the ugc team came here and then reported that they have uh, pre university courses which are not uh, registered under um, the the boat uh, system and then we received letters from ugc uh, saying that you need to register it uh, otherwise you have to stop it and uh, and we were responding that uh, we cannot uh, yeah, register this because there's no any kind of boat in india at the national level or in the state level where the tibetan studies and the buddhist studies and tibetan languages are uh, you know um, the 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 um, given so and then we had uh, several exchanges of uh, uh, communication between ugc and uh, ourselves and finally i got a letter in uh, in by maybe april or something like that march april saying that you need to stop these courses of pre university pm and um by next uh, semester so that was a shocking because we cannot stop it because we need uh, students uh, uh, prepared for the shastri uh, courses as in science we need to have uh, 10 plus 2 those who are desirous to go into science line uh, we need to have uh, pre university courses uh, for them to provide uh, initiatives and orientations similarly buddhist philosophy is also a very profound subject and uh, no student from 10 plus 2 can directly enter into jump into shastri and uh, at the graduate le- undergraduate level and uh, have access into these subjects 
So therefore, it is extremely and absolutely unacceptable. So then I went to the chairperson of the UGC and discussed with him. And he also shares the same kind of thought that, yes, I can understand your problem. It is the bureaucratic system of a UGC. They have uh, uh, executed and they have uh, done these things. Now you need to go to uh, HRD and uh, the... Uh, Secretary is a very gentle person, very thoughtful, very considerate, and uh, so he will certainly consider your uh, case and uh, pay attention to the case because it is very serious. And then I went uh, to Shri Ashok Thakurji, and uh, that was my first meeting. And right away, he took it very seriously and uh, called for a meeting, um, inviting joint secretaries from UGC and uh, other secretaries, joint secretaries from Minister of Human Resource. And then the following day, we had a discussion. And surprisingly, one of the joint secretary had, a, when the, the issue was being discussed and uh, uh, Sri Ashokji pondered upon the issue, then one of these joint secretary of UGC had brought a document in which he says, that the deemed universities do not need to have a, a, approval of the pre-university courses from the board because they themselves can do it because the board slash university is already there. So now actually you see the you know the problems and the 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 lacuna or within the system of UGC. They do already have the document within UGC itself, but many of the people who are working in the system have no acquaintance with the, these informations. So then we said, I um, said in the meeting that uh, I have been actually literally harassed by the UGC. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally, this could have been solved at the UGC level, but the, unfortunately, this was not solved. And then Sri Ashok Thakurji said that now there's no problem. So you, uh, you can keep on having this, uh, running these uh, pre-university courses. And it was resolved instantly. Otherwise, had it been in another kind of uh, um, the, the uh, situation, then I might uh, have to you know, walk from one place to another place, and this might have been uh, um, moving from file to file and things like that might have happened, but instantly uh, Shri Ashokji solved that problem. The another case, again, is a very serious case that, uh, again, we ha were having correspondence with the UGC, MOA, Memorandum of Association, in which we have the constitution of a board and uh, societies. And uh, the UGC was uh, again instructing us uh, very strictly that uh, very directly, didactically that uh, now you need, you should not be having any representat representatives from Ministry of Culture, representatives from MEA, representatives of His Holiness the Dalai Lama, representatives of uh, HRD because uh, uh, According to the deemed to universities, uh, uh, the the rules and regulation that was based on regulation formulated in 2010, the in fact uh, those the university deemed to be universities regulation was formulated, uh, keeping in mind uh, basically the private deemed to be universities. So that was the basic kind of basic uh, source of uh, the problem, and uh, so I went to because we were having interaction and the UGC was not ready to listen because the, the, the Babus were also, uh, you know, right in certain uh, aspect that uh, it was already in the regulation 2010. And uh, then again, I went to UGC chairman and he told me that you have to approach uh, the HRT uh, ministry. And then again, I went to uh, Shri Ashokji saying that this is not a problem of a CISTS. This is a problem of all the government-funded uh, deemed universities because their societies are, uh, the, the, the funding agencies are the governments. 
in case of uh, central government, the, uh, the, risk, the, the concerned uh, central ministry, and in the case of state-funded uh, 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 deemed universities, the state governments, uh, the concerned departments. So it is not a matter related to or associated with CIHTS, but uh, it is an uh, uh, issue that is to be addressed by HRD. So perhaps we were the first time to first one to uh, to approach Minister of uh, HRD to 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 address this issue, and then again he understood the problem in a very uh, you know uh, minded way, and then. Uh, they, they um, started the process and finally it was resolved that the, uh, the boards and the society, whatever it is in for the, the, the private universities, the concerned department would be the funding agency, which is uh, Ministry of Culture in our case. And then the representative of His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, and the representative of the Minister of External Affairs, as we had, can be maintained. So then all the problems are solved. Otherwise, this is a political problem and also institutional problem and problem at a very gross level and a very uh, serious matter. So we are very thankful that these are um, two of the many problems that he has helped us to pull us out of the problem and uh, put us in a safe place. So we are very thankful to him, please. The clever Babu knows what his boss wants. <laughs> Without even speaking, it, it gets done. <laughs> so uh, Ashok ji has uh, such a brilliant uh, career and also uh, when we hear from other people, other IS officers and uh, the departments in the ministry, everybody says that Ashokji's vision, his uh, kind of supportiveness, his uh, constructive attitude, his, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the vision that he has uh, to improve the system, not just uh, paying attention to individual cases. Of course, that is also to be done, but uh, he always pays attention to improve the system itself and uh, with, which can have a wider impact uh, at the national level, at the uh, education level, at a very uh, uh, wider perspective. So I'm very thankful to Ashokji and um, uh, the, the lecture, that uh, talk he has given covers a wide range of uh, the, um, you know, the topics, uh, starting from the uh, the the, uh, the nature of education. Of course, uh, nature of education, as we have been uh, talking, should not be compartmentalized. And uh, earlier, now it is becoming better at the global level that uh, the compartmentalization is uh, being dismantled at various places. Otherwise, up to up till nineties. Uh, it was very much compartmentalized. So the person of physics, a person of physics does not have access to other uh, disciplines. And similarly, the uh, humanitarian, uh, humanitarian kind of pe people do not have access to science and other things. So, but now it doesn't work. In reality, in life, in society, it doesn't work. And now these are the compartments are being dismantled and many, for even just for work or for treatment, one must uh, have, uh, you know, knowledge and experience in different fields. Only then the person can uh, give a proper service to society and give a proper treatment to patient. So therefore, this is absolutely, you are right that it should not be compartmentalized and uh, the knowledge should be uh, universal in nature. As Buddha has said, that uh, the knowledge should be holistic in nature and which must have, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the uh, access to different uh, disciplines. And uh, the, 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 uh, the, the standards uh, that uh, Ashokji has been you know, talking about uh, uh, that requires to be kept in mind and we have been trying to do our best in contributing uh, in a very kind of a, a small uh, portion or in a very small manner, however, but 
in terms of recruitment of our teachers, recruitment of our uh, the 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 um, staff, we do our best to make it uh, transparent. And I think, as you have uh, the idea that this is one of the most important factor in imp improving uh, the. Uh, um, the, the quality of education and as you have rightly said that there are many pressures I also have uh, lots of pressures uh, and you know direct call from the ministries and from uh, the, the political leaders and things like that but we never succumb to that I can give up my you know the position but we are not going to succumb to that kind of uh, pressure so that is one of the reason once we are we succumb to such a pressure then the door is opened so Therefore, we must not succumb to, so far we have never done. I hope we will be able to uh, preserve that tradition. And uh, many of the points that you have raised are very practical. And since you have a vision and then you have practically worked, you have been into the system and try to improve it in many ways. So your, the views that you have expressed uh, in terms of the quality of education that we have in this great nation and also the way that we can, you know, uh, do something to improve it. So everybody has the responsibility to improve the, the, the quality. Uh, without touching many of the other in the, the uh, topics, uh, teaching and research and uh, then humanity and uh, science. So the budget that uh, you, one of our faculty member has raised that, and also the 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 uh, budget uh, point zero eight point zero eight right point point zero eight uh, percent of uh, GDP is spent for education, and within that very budget, the humanity has the least one. But I think I have a kind of. A, a, hope in future that uh, certainly if we can work uh, and produce our and project our project the importance of humanity then uh, not only we can draw the you know more funds the funds can be drawn only when the government and the society regards that section important right now in the western countries humanity science needs humanity science needs the uh, philosophy, science needs a traditional psychology, science needs a traditional kind of uh, the mind training systems. So the need and requirement and importance of uh, the mind training, the you know psychological systems and the system of mind, the science of mind, which are found in great detail in depth are preserved in our culture that is you know originated from Nalanda tradition. So once we can project it, now it is already being, you know, regarded very highly in the Western world, you know, particularly in the Western scientific world. So once we are able to project it, project its importance, because with the help of the mind, science of mind and mind training, we can improve the entire so social level. We can improve this standard of the, the mental standard of the, our, you know, the society's members and uh, not by just uh, having drugs uh, but uh, by you know through going through a mental treatment through meditational processes through mind training one can get a proper treatment of uh, you know alleviate from suffering and also to get a better concentration attention for children and a better mental peace and uh, tranquility through these kind of, uh, you know, the mind trainings. So I think if we can project these great uh, resources uh, to society and to gov government and to make it, make these areas as something attractive and important that the society pays more attention to this, government pays more attention to this, certainly the humanity uh, can draw more attention and then uh, of course government can you know start some projects and give grants grants is uh, you know just a offshoot but uh, uh, 
uh, byproduct, but uh, once these areas become a major area of studies in our society, then the society will definitely fl flourish, right? So, uh, so we in our uh, institute also, the teachers are uh, always encouraged to do research because uh, it is not, as you rightly said, that these, it is not just a teaching institute. Uh, it is a research institute in which uh, the research is a kind of a, um, uh, most important kind of uh, the exercise in terms of uh, developing the respective uh, uh, disciplines and advancing the disciplines uh, of the you know um, the, the respective uh, the faculties and departments and to this is something that we are trying to do it. And um, in future also, we would like to have you uh, amongst us and uh, give you guidance. And uh, with these words, I once again, thank you for coming here and uh, giving a talk on education. Thank you very much. Thank you. Word of thanks by the Register, Dr. Ranjil Kumar Upadhyaji. मंच पर बैठे हुए माननीय कुलपत पद्मश्री प्रोफेसर नांग शामतेन जी आज इस सभागार में मुख्य अतिथि के रूप में और मुख्य वक्ता के रूप में भूतपूर्व सचिव मानव संसाधन मंत्रालय भारत सरकार श्री अशोक ठाकुर जी सभागार में बैठे हुए हमारे संकाय प्रमुख गण विभागाध्यक्ष आचार्य वृंद अधिकारीगण कर्मचारीगण और मेरे प्रिय छात्र छात्राओं आज हम लोगों का सौभाग्य है कि हम लोगों के बीच में ऐसे मनीषी जिनका इतना अनुभव खास करके प्रशासनिक शीर्ष पर बैठे हुए जो शिक्षा के क्षेत्र में तमाम कठिनाइयाँ जो एजुकेशनल इंस्टीट्यूशंस चाहे फंड के रूप में हो या रेगुलेशंस के रूप में हो लोग देख रहे हैं ऐसे बीच हम लोगों के बीच में आ करके और एजुकेशन के विषय में विभिन्न आयामों को टच करते हुए जो उन्होंने अपनी बात रखी मैं श्री अशोक ठाकुर जी जो अपने व्यस्त कार्यक्रमों में और माननीय कुलपत जी के निवेदन पे उन्होंने समय निकाल निकाला हम लोगों के बीच में आ पाए मैं संस्था की तरफ से इंस्टीट्यूट की तरफ से और व्यक्तिगत मैं आपको शादुवाद देता हूं बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद माननीय कुलपत जी के निर्देशन में प्राय इस तरह के कार्यक्रम होते रहते हैं और उनका निर्देश हम लोगों को मिलता है आज इस कार्यक्रम में बहुत कम समय में हम लोगों ने सूचना मिली और इसके बाद इतनी भीड़ आई है और सर का एक निर्देश तत्काल उसको हम लोगों ने एग्जीक्यूट किया मैं सर के जो उनका निर्देशन था और ख़ास करके एजुकेशन के इस मनीषी रूप में श्री अशोक ठाकुर जी जो हम लोगों के बीच में उपलब्ध थे और उनसे निवेदन किया गया मैं माननीय कुलपत जी को इसके लिए साधुवाद देता हूं बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद ऐसे जो बीच बीच में मनीषी आते हैं तो हम लोग उससे लाभान्वित होने का काम करते हैं इस सभागार में बैठे हुए संकाय अध्यक्ष और विभागाध्यक्ष आचार्यगण आप सभी को धन्यवाद मेरे प्रिय छात्र छात्राएं और स्पेशली जो हमारे फैकल्टी मेंबर्स ने जो क्वेश्चंस रेज किए मैं उनको भी शादुवाद देता हूं और परोक्ष या अपरोक्ष रूप में जो इस व्यवस्था को मदद करने में जिन लोगों ने भी सहयोग दिया है मैं सबको धन्यवाद देता हूं बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद